Once again, let me turn on the light so that, you know, we can see. There we go. So, two nights in a row. Oh, what is happening with my chair? Two nights in a row. I don't know really what to call this segment. Um, I'm still working on a name. But an idea that I had after I did the last nightly chat was um, that I would just kind of maybe chat about my day or whatever. And then I really wanted to kind of like take the Bible, take what I'm reading, um, and really kind of talk about the Bible as if I was having a conversation about some friends of mine, about like, I really want to take the Bible and kind of what I learned and make it relatable. <clears throat> because sometimes the Bible can seem so far away. It was such a long time ago. It's a people that I never knew. It was a time that I never knew of. So, um, this is something I never planned really. Um, it's just as I was sitting and chatting with you guys last night about Ezra, I was thinking, I really, I don't know if you guys enjoyed this. I, I, I got one person that said she enjoyed it. I appreciate that. Um, but I was just thinking maybe this would be fun. Maybe this would be just like sitting down with a couple, like giving you the spilling the Bible tea. Like, that's what I feel like I'm doing. Um, so, I'm gonna, I gotta work on a name. I gotta work on a name for, for the segment. If you have an idea, let me know. So, tonight. So, today is um, Monday. And I've started my Camp Jesus. If you don't know what Camp Jesus is, um, somebody else probably made it up to you, but... It probably means something else to other people, but to me, like, my my Camp Jesus is actually going and camping and or leaving my house. My Camp Jesus is usually a uh, social media fast. Sometimes it's paired with a sugar fast or, or, like, a food fast. But in particular, this particular fast is this particular Camp Jesus Oh, I'm sorry. This particular Camp Jesus is a scrolling fast because, man, I've just, I'll catch myself an hour in and I'm just like, I, I thought I was supposed to go clean this room. I thought I was supposed to go, you know, catch up on the book for the book club or like, and here I am getting caught up with all this social media, like just, just scrolling not just catching up with the people that I watch out for because there's like a handful of people that I watch all the time because they inspire me and and I just I just would like to have their back but I don't need to be watching all of these IGTVs or, or not I don't these like what are they called reels Okay, so I'm obsessed with pandas. We all know this. It's not a secret. I'm obsessed with pandas. In my house, you are no further than two feet away from a panda somewhere. Either in the bedroom. I think there's one in the kitchen. I don't think there's any in the living room. But there's there's lots in my room. Like, there is, there's a panda within reach. Like, wherever wherever I go, like, there is a, there, there is a panda within reach. I'm obsessed with pandas. So, when I see these cute little baby pandas in the reels, just eating bamboo and minding their business, I have to watch it. Like, I can't help myself. I have no self-control when it comes to stuff like that. I don't know. So, sometimes to get myself in check, I've got to say, okay, it's time for Camp Jesus. It's time for a no scroll. <laughs> For at least a week. No scroll. Um, because I'm the type of person that I get st stuff. What are you doing? What are you doing? Get out of there. Sophia. Sophia. Whatever. 
Just she's just gonna do whatever she wants, anyways. I forget what I was saying. What was I saying? Oh, uh, um. But I could just get caught up and scroll. Oh, I was talking about my mind. Thank you, Jesus. I have the kind of mind where stuff gets stuck in it. Like, if I go to a store and they're playing, like, this, like, nasty worldly songs. You need to stop acting up. I would get that song stuck in my head. And therefore, the only way to get it out is to make up, like, lyrics. You know, like, glorify God with the same with the, with the beat in my head and just sing it over and over in with my version until it annoys me and it goes away. But let's say I'm watching something or um oh my goodness like on the weekends sometimes I play Minecraft and I will dream about playing Minecraft like. This stuff will get stuck in my head, which is the reason why I only play on the weekends and not even every weekend. And sometimes it's just like one night on the weekend. I just love to build and stuff. So stuff gets stuck in my head and I know this. And if I don't watch what I, if I don't pay attention to what I'm watching, it'll get stuck in my head. I'll dream about it. Like I'll think about stupid random things like Stuff just gets stuck in my head and not that what I'm watching is bad or evil or immoral or anything like that. Because if, if something like that comes on, I, 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 I go right past it. So it's not like what I'm watching is bad. It's just filling my head full of nonsense um, and steals my focus. So... Sometimes when I'm like, okay, we've been scrolling a little too much. We've been like sitting here an hour just like, ooh, oh, okay, I need to check this. Oh, what's she doing? Oh, what's that? Oh, where do you get that? Oh, what does that do? <laughs> squirrel, squirrel. So, so because of that, I'm on a social media fast and I call it Camp Jesus because during this fast, I spend a lot of focused time studying. Like, I study anyways, but I really spend a lot of, like, focused time studying. And I take that social media time and I spend it somewhere else, whether it's crafting or whether it's spending time with Rocky or reading, not just the Bible, but other books. Like, there's better things to do with my time. So now that I've I've talked about that, <laughs> um, so yeah, what I why did I even tell you guys that? I don't even know. Oh, so I use I have a particular like binder that I use when I'm on Camp Jesus that I use regular for Bible studying. Um, but I, I decided that I was just gonna put my regular Bible study journal in in my big camp jesus like trapper keeper which i thought it was so cool that they had a trapper keeper anyways so that's what i've been up to and so i want to talk about i'm reading job i'm studying job now i actually put it out on um facebook on glory girls that I was reading Job. If you guys wanted to read it with me, you know, that we could share notes if you want, you know. And as I was reading, as I was reading Job, I just kept thinking, oh, there's so much stuff that I want to talk about. There's so much stuff that I want to cover. Like, like, wow. So, where shall I start off? So right away, the Bible says that Job is a righteous man who is has complete integrity. Um, God talks about Job very highly, saying that he is a man that fears the Lord. And, and then here comes Satan, who's always, always, he don't know how to shut up. He's always running his mouth about something, always trying to start something, always trying to come and tattletale. And... 
and here's God. He's like, did you see my servant Job? Because he's like, Satan, what are you doing? And Satan was like, I'm roaming the earth. I'm just checking up on everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing who I can tattle on, basically, is what he was doing. I'm seeing who I can snitch on, who I can get in trouble so that you can give me a right to mess with some people. He was looking to stir up some stuff. And, and God was like, have you, have you, what's the word he used? Basically, have you noticed my servant Job? And right away, he calls Job his servant. Have you noticed my servant Job? You know, he's, he's a, a righteous man and, and he is completely, um, he has complete integrity and he fears me and he's really talking up Job and Satan is just like, yeah, whatever. The only reason that Job is even talking to you or, you know, serving you is because you protect him and you protect his house and you've given him all these blessings. And that's the only reason that he's, he's living for you, basically. And so, so God's like, oh, yeah. You know, so at this point, I'm thinking, oh, Lord, if this were me, like, I serve you because I love you. But my anxiety could not handle all of that. Okay. And okay, anyways. So he's like, you know, and then he's like, oh, yeah, he said, go ahead, take his possessions, but do not touch his life. So here's Satan like, ooh, yeah, I get to go and I get to have fun and I'm going to watch him crumble. He is going to curse God. He is going to curse him to his face. I can't wait to see, you know, God see how his precious Job reacts when I take all his stuff. Because, you know, us people, we like our possessions. We like our possessions I like my possessions. I like all my planners and my pens and, you know, all my stuff. So that's a, that's one way to really test if you love God. If he took all your stuff, would you still love him? Okay. So, and it says that Job is this rich farmer. And, and he's got all this cattle and all this sheep and all these bulls and it names like how many of each he has and basically he's he's very well off but his behave he doesn't behave like some rich dude that's stuck up on himself you know every morning he sacrifices animals just in case his children may have sinned so he didn't just carry care about himself but he really cared about his family and really did his best to take care of and make sure that his children were right with God. And what is the first thing? What is the first thing that Satan comes after? The first thing. His bulls. What were bulls used for? Sacrifice. He comes after Job's sacrifice. Now, maybe you think about this and it's just like, oh, you know, whatever. Like, you could take my... Don't come for my cat, Satan. Don't do it. But, like, bull, you know, uh, uh, whatever. Like, I give more animals, you know. But that was Job's sacrifice. That's how he, that's how he sacrificed for his kid, children. That's how he worshipped God. Was taking, like... He could have made money off of those bulls. He could have sold them to, to make, like, to, I forget what it's called, sold them off to have them mated. He could have, like, you know, he could have done anything. He could have thrown a party and had them to eat himself. But, girl, you need to chill out. You need to get out of there. I'm not going to fight with you. But instead, he made it a purpose. That every time he thought his kids did something that dissatisfied God, he went and he got his bulls and he sacrificed. So, Satan's like, I'm going to come after your sacrifice. I'm going to come after your worship because he's probably thinking, 
all Job thinks that in order to appease God, you know, he's got to have this sacrifice. I'm going to steal his worship. I'm going to steal his livelihood. And he is going to curse God. But lo and behold, <laughs> I'm sure he was surprised. Not only did he steal his, his bulls, his rams, his sheep, but then all of his servants were dying. And like all of these servants were coming up at the same time. Like, I'm the only one surviving. I'm the only, like I'm sure he had to be stressed out. And then his children. Like his children died. And to any normal person. They would be like, why, God? Why did you take my kids? Why did you take my sheep? Why did you take my bulls? Because, you know, I used them to worship you. Why did you do this, God? And Job's reaction was he stripped off his clothes, got in in ashes and sackcloth, and was just like, God, you are the God that gives and takes away. And he begins to lift up God and to worship him and exalt him. He didn't complain. Like he, he complained later on. But at this moment when he loses all this stuff, he didn't complain. He didn't curse God and get mad. He he got in sackcloth and ashes basically repenting. Saying like, I must have done something wrong. He didn't blame God. He, he said, I must have done something wrong. I must have done something wrong. And... I'm sure Satan's watching all this and his mouth is like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So I've only got to chapter one, but I know like I've read Job before. I've read Job before. And then he goes up and he's like, but if you would, if you would do this, like, always got excuses he's always got excuses and i love the way that it talked about not only did job trust god but god trusted job he knew full well when he put him through this what kind of man he was and that he would not curse him but he instead worshiped him he knew what kind of heart Job had. And I'm like, man, could you say that about me, God? Could you say that about me, that I have that kind of heart? Could you call me a woman of complete integrity? I'm not even close. I'm not even close to where Job is. But I watch this and, and I see, and, and I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, but I'll still come back and talk as I read stuff. I I watch this and I watch it's like his wife is like just curse God and die. His friends are like, What did you do? What did you do? Just repent. Repent now. Repent. I don't know what you did, but how he must have felt. How he must have felt knowing that to the that to the best of his ability he was a righteous guy, that he loved God and he feared God. And instead of having people to encourage him and to love him and to be there with him, they're like, just curse God and die. Because, like, you done something wrong. You did something bad. Like, I don't know what you did to bring this curse on you. I don't want friends like that. I don't want friends that as soon as something bad happens in my life, they're like, she must have done something wrong. She's she has all this heart problems and stuff because she ain't going to church. She has all this heart problems and stuff because she probably ain't serving God. She probably ain't reading her Bible. She probably she probably ain't tithing enough. That's why she has all. But can I say that sometimes God will allow a person to walk through some junk just to show the devil these are my people who serve me regardless even if they treat they love me the same way whether i bless them or i take them through some suffering yeah they may ask me questions they may ask me why but my people love me whether i bless them 
or whether I take them through stuff, whether they have to go through some some heartache, go through loss, go through healing, or whether they're getting blessed out of the wazoo. My true people love me no matter what. And I wanted to talk about that a little bit already. We're already in 20 minutes. Oh my gosh. But how quick are Christians to judge? How quick are people even today when they see somebody going through stuff? They're like, I wonder what she did. I wonder what he did. Oh, man, they must have really made God mad. They must not be tithing enough. Oh, they're not going to church. That's why God's doing these things. He's teaching them a lesson. Maybe the reason, help me not to say nothing stupid, Jesus. Maybe the reason nothing bad ever happens to you is because God can't trust you to go through stuff and still serve him. I'm going to say that again. Maybe the reason that nothing bad happens to you is because God can't trust you enough to go through crap and still serve him. So before we judge people that are going through stuff and say, oh, they're going through it because God's judging them. Oh, they're going through it because they didn't do this and they didn't do that. Maybe they're going through it because God says, I can trust this person enough to go through garbage and still love me, still worship me. Not curse me to my face. Not blame me. Not not say, like we're all going to say why God. But not sit there and constantly complain. Sometimes, you guys, those of you who are like me that are suffering. That are in pain. That are going through things. That are going through hardships that seem like it never wants to get better. I want you to know that you're doing something right Because God trusts you enough to give you these tests. To throw it in the face of Satan. To say, see, my people will still serve me. My people, they will will allow me to bring them through these things. To teach them stuff. Because they trust that I'm going to bring them out of it. They trust me. So this has shown me, like this has opened my eyes. Like I said, I've read Job before. But this has really opened my eyes and said, God, is this why you allowed me and Rocky to constantly go through stuff? Is this why you've allowed my heart to... Let me tell you, I I am thankful. Not that I'm thankful for all the stuff that I've had to go through. But in a way, I am thankful for my heart disease. Because number one, it's brought me closer to God. Number two, it has humbled me. And number three, it has taught me that I can't do nothing on my own. But now I'm looking at this and I'm saying, God, did you allow me to go through these things because you trusted me? Like, is this a mark and a sign of your trust in me? There is no higher compliment in this world than to have have the one and only true God say, I trust you enough with this test. I trust you with this heart disease. I trust you. With this health condition. I trust you with these lack of finances. I trust you to go through these hard 